All right, everybody, welcome. It's Family Friday, and we're here together again, this time on a long weekend. So we are really glad that you have taken a few minutes out of your day to join us, and welcome to Family Friday on our midday moments. You know, I've been talking to my family recently about some of the things that we love to do on long weekends, and one of those things that we love to do is to travel and to drive. Now, can't do very much of that right now, but uh, we love to take some time and, and, and do that. But we also, when we're in the car, we love to play games together. And some of our favorite games are just to make the time pass. One of them that we play often is called the alphabet game. And well, the alphabet game, just you take road signs or you take billboards and you look for the letters of the alphabet in order. So you need to find an A and then a B and then a C. You can't bank them anywhere. And it can be a lot of fun because sometimes you're stuck on Q and... Uh, a pizza truck goes by and you think, oh my gosh, that's a Z. I, I totally wanted that one. Oh no. You know, and, and we see how many times we might be able to go through and those sorts of things. But uh, maybe you have a favorite game that you play as well as a family in the car. I don't know. You can certainly let us know that in the comment section. But today I brought Abby. You're going to be with us today. I'm glad you're here. We're going to play a game today that we've actually never played together before. So we're going to see uh, how you do. I'm going to explain the rules to you. And please feel free to play at home as well uh, as you're watching this. But basically what's going to happen is I'm going to give you 10 seconds to name five physical characteristics of something. Um, now, the, you have to be a, it has to be a physical characteristic. In other words, if I said banana, you would say it's yellow and it's curved, those sorts of things, okay? But you can't give an opinion about it. For example, you can't say it's delicious because maybe some people don't like bananas. They don't agree with that. Or maybe you'd say, I think it's the most appealing fruit. Appealing fruit. See what I, all right. Anyways, appealing fruit that's out there. That's again, that's an opinion. So you can't give that. And you can't give me the reason that you actually, that, you, that it's there. So you can't say, I eat a banana. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've got a few things that are going to get harder as we go. Okay, we're going to show you a picture. You're going to have 10 seconds, five physical characteristics. Play along with us at home. Are you ready to go? Yes. Here we go. Your first thing that I need you to describe for me is a book. Okay. Are you ready? You have 10 seconds starting right now. Okay. It's a rectangle. There's pages. There's words in it. It's got a spine and it's got a cover. That's really good. Re yeah, you did really good there. All right, wow, we still have some time left. That's good. Uh, you, you nailed that one. Well done. All right, our second one. Are you ready? Okay, here you go. I need you to give me five things that describe a puppy. Are you ready? Yep. You have 10 seconds, and here we go. Okay, um, it's got ears, it's got paws, and a nose, and eyes, and it's very cute and fluffy. I think cute is an opinion. Okay, it's fluffy. Well, I guess, I mean, who wouldn't think that that puppy was super cute? Okay, good stuff. All right, our third one. Are you ready? Let's see how you do with this one. Five seconds to describe a refrigerator. Try it home. Here we go. Go ahead. Okay, um, it's another rectangle. It's got doors. It's got handles. It's cold. Um, it's got shelves. It's only cold if it's plugged in. It's got plug. It's got plug. Okay, nice job. You're doing really well. Good job. All right, sweet. Okay, let's try another one. See how you do. All right. This time you're gonna have ten seconds to give me five characteristics of an airplane and go. Okay. Um, it's made of metal. It's got seats and wings and wheels and. Windows? Windows. You got that one right at the very end. Good job. All right. I got two more. Okay. All right. Try this one. This one I found really difficult. I need you to give me five physical characteristics of the ocean. Are you ready? Okay. Yep. And go. Uh, it's made of water. There's animals in it. Um, it's got a shore. The it's ocean got has a shore? That's the shore. That's not the ocean. I don't um, Plants? No, oh, you didn't get that one. I kind of interrupted you. I don't know if you guys got five at home, but 
Uh, that one's a tough one. Mm -hmm. All right, our last one that I'm going to give you, this one is really tricky, all right? So I'm going to give you one, and this time I'm going to give you 10 seconds to name three physical characteristics, okay? So three physical characteristics of a Christian. What does a Christian look like? Are you ready? You got 10 seconds starting right now. Um, it's a person. Yep. And this one's really hard. Yes, it is really hard, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, can you tell what a person, if a person is a believer in Christ by how they look? Well, you can't really. Do you know, though, that back in Jesus' time, they actually had some religious leaders who thought that by what they wore or what they dressed like, that that would tell people that they were really important. You know, Jesus tells us in the Bible, in the book of Mark, he says that these are people who like to walk around in long robes and they like greetings in the marketplace. They stood there looking very, very proper. And they loved when people would go and say, hello, rabbi, because it was basically saying, hello, teacher, or they would get a, a, a great seat if they were at a banquet somewhere uh, or a function of some kind. They would get that. Uh, it would be really good. And it's funny because why they dressed like that and why they did those, those things, actually, Jesus tells us why. In the book of Matthew, Jesus says everything that they do is done for people to see. See, they were motivated. In other words, they did things because they wanted to be noticed. And I think if we were walking through a street somewhere and we saw somebody with the long robes and a staff and, and they were doing all of these things, we'd probably notice them, wouldn't we? And that's really what, the, what, what these religious leaders, this is what they were trying to do, was get the attention brought on them. They wanted to be honored. It was what other people thought of them that really mattered. And no, we don't see people like this really anymore. I've seen one or two here and there. But sometimes um, we still do things because we're motivated by what people think about us on the outside. In other words, sometimes we'll present ourselves in a certain way that's really just trying to cover up what's actually going on. And so we're more concerned about what people are thinking. But as Christians, um, we've actually been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes and indwells in us. And so now our motivation changes from what we, what other people are concerned about with now what God is doing in our lives because he lives inside of us. And that is so important. So today, just as we go into this weekend, I'm going to give you three quick indicators or things that you can just check to make sure that we're knowing where our motivation is coming from. Is it coming from the outside or is it coming from the inside? And the first one is this. When we're motivated from the inside, we talk to God. Now, that seems uh, interesting. There's a lot of people who will talk about God, who will read about God, who will talk about the things of God. Uh, there's lots of people who will tell other people that they have a great relationship with God. But wouldn't it be weird, Abby, if I only spent time telling everybody here about you but never actually talk to you. See, it's important that we do talk to other people about God, but one of those indicators about whether our motivation is coming from the outside or, is the, or from the inside is, do we spend time actually talking to God? And we talked about that a couple of weeks ago when we talked about prayer, and we said what a great privilege that is, but we've got to remember that God wants us to talk with him. It's, uh, it's very important, and we don't pray just because we think it looks good. Maybe, maybe you know, you just pray at a meal out loud because you think that you're supposed to. That's motivated from the outside. We want to be motivated from the inside. We want to talk to God because of who He is and because the Holy Spirit prompts us, and then we respond. Okay, the second thing that we can always check is when we're motivated from the inside, we open God's Word. We actually open his word. It's, it's, it's not just enough to own a Bible. Think about it. Would you buy a television or a computer and never turn it on? How about this, Abby? Would you go somewhere and get lunch and you'd bring your food to your table and you'd sit down and you would just look at it? No, that'd be crazy. Like you never do anything. You just stare at it. You don't eat it. 
That would be crazy. Just owning a Bible, that doesn't make us a Christian. It's, it's when we open it. You know, I had somebody once tell me that when the Bible is open, it means that God is talking. And when we're motivated from the inside, I, you know, in prayer, I talk to God all the time. But in his word, the Bible tells us that his word, that God's word is living and active, which means that when we read it, it changes us. It doesn't change us on the outside. It changes us on the inside. So when we're motivated from the inside, we want to open God's word. We want to read the Bible because it's changing who we are and making us more like Jesus. It's really cool. So that's another indicator. It's not just about owning a Bible. It's actually opening it and reading it and spending time with God. And that is such an important thing that we have to do. And that's a good sign that we're being motivated from the inside. Okay, the third one is this. When we're motivated from the inside, our actions on the outside, our outward actions, it will show it. Okay? Now, Jesus actually tells us this in, uh, in John 14, verse 15. He says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And this is really interesting. He doesn't say, you know, you'll keep my commandments because you want other people to see that. He says, no, look, he's talking about our motivation. It comes from the inside. When we love Jesus because he's our savior and we're in a relationship with him, man, that's like the best thing ever. And because of what he's done for us, because he's changed us on the inside, our motivation is to do what he's told us to do. Maybe it's something we've just learned about. Maybe it's something that God has prompted you to do. But when we know that it's coming from God, we want to obey him. And that's a great motivator. It's not so other people can see how good we are. It's because of, of the relationship we have with him. And it can be a little bit tricky sometimes because, well, we're all sinners, right? And all of us still live sometimes disobediently to God. But what happens when we're, when we're a Christian, when, we're, when we have the Spirit inside of us, when we do something that we know is against God's Word, there's something happens inside where we feel really bad about it. And we don't want to feel bad. It's not because I'm worried about what other people think. But God is saying, you did something wrong. But he's given us a way that we can confess that. And wow, you know what he does then? He cleans us. He just, it's, it's gone. And then we feel so much better on the inside. And we grow in our faith even further. So those are three quick indicators that maybe you can check. Where is my motivation coming from? Is it coming from the outside? Or is it coming from the inside? And that's a great way that we can check and just make sure that we're, we're getting the most out of we can with our relationship. I'm going to give you one more quick little uh, visual example of this. I have a couple of apples here. And as you can see, uh, they both look red. They both look really juicy. They both look good. Let's see what they look like on the inside. Okay, we're going to break them. Here's mine. And, and there's yours. And you can see, uh, even though they look the same on the outside... There is two totally different things going on on the inside. And, you know, one of the things that we have to remember is that before God comes into our life, before we've received the Holy Spirit, this is what our insides look like. It's sinful and it's awful, but Jesus makes us like this. He, he cleans us. He cleanses us. And uh, where would you want to come from? Do you want everything we do? To, ugh, you want it to come from this great, clean place that Jesus has made for us. Well, you know, just before we leave, I did have one other thing, and it is, uh, as we go into this long weekend, uh, it's Family Friday, and one of the most important people in my family uh, is my wife, and tomorrow is our 22nd wedding anniversary. So I just wanted to take a quick second and tell her how much I love her and thank her uh, for marrying me and being my ministry partner Love you so much, and uh, hey, let's just take a moment as we pray together um, to finish our time together. Dear God, thank you uh, that you have changed us, uh, God, that you have indwelled us, that you have um, taken up residence inside of our bodies. God, help us that even though um, we see all of these things outside, God, that uh, we should be motivated by our relationship inside, the one that we have with you, our great God and Savior. So God, I pray this weekend as we 
go, uh, go our way. Uh, Lord, would you give us an amazing weekend that we uh, focus a little bit on what is motivating us. God, are we motivated by trying to impress others or are we motivated by growing stronger in a relationship with you? God, give us a great rest of our day as we go into this weekend. We pray in the saving name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you all.